So welcome everyone for this uh, virtual meetup on the topic, Lightning Fast API Package Development with Connector Builder. I am Arjun Esmeda, Director for Community and Learning at Automation Anywhere. And I'm joined by, by our experts from Automation Anywhere. We have Vineet Pujari. Uh, he's a Senior Product Manager. Vineet, do you want to say uh, hi to our folks? And hi, everyone, uh, yeah. especially everyone joining across the world. Hello, hola, namaste. Glad to have all of you on the call. Nice. When you're saying hi to uh, our folks, do you also just want to say something interesting about you, which you would want uh, everybody to remember about you? Um. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's interesting for everyone, but I also sell chocolates as as a part-time hobby. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a small website and I, I it's a very, very small business. So I sell only to customers when they place an order already. So it's like, um, you, you can't find it online, but you have to call me and place the order. And then I start making the chocolates and that's how I deliver. Awesome. I just want to share one interesting fact about myself, which I will always happy to share about. And I would also want others to share about interesting facts. So I've completed a full marathon last year in Bangalore. And I want to do it this year as well. I'm hoping to do this in the probably like October, November time frame this year. And That's let great, me, yeah, thank you. Let me introduce our other speaker, Vipul Kumar Patil. He is a software development manager here at Automation Anywhere. Hi, Vipul. Uh, could you please say hi to our folks and also share some interesting fact about you? Yeah, hello, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, about interesting fact, like uh, this year, I completed uh, 10 years in IT. And I remember like one of the director told me when I when I newly joined in IT, like always look for the opportunity. So that's uh, actually the interesting during that time. And I follow the same path and I would like to share this to you as well. Look around the opportunity, even though it's personal or professional. So yeah, that would help. Awesome. We also have Nirmal from our documentation hi. team. Nirmal, do you want to say hi to our folks and share an interesting fact about you? Yes, sure. So uh, my name is Nirmal. So um, I like traveling around the world. I have traveled a lot of countries and I am you know, uh, like to travel. So that's something about me myself okay great we also have uh, some of our uh, folks from the engineering team abhijit and uh, ashish i don't know if they are ready to uh, say hi and share interesting fact because i don't want to put them on spot <laughs> but thank you <laughs> folks uh, for joining so let's start so today we are going to talk about an api package development tool or you can call them as like a custom package builder or connector builder. Before we get into this topic, can you let me know how many of you have used our SDK to build our packages? If you have, uh, if you are familiar with it, can you just type in SDK in the chat window? Okay, good to know. We have a good number of folks uh, who have known about our SDK, great. So one more question before we kind of begin, like which language did you have to know if you have to use Automation Anywhere's SDK? Can you type the language? Awesome, yes. Okay, somebody mentioned Python, but our SDK is mainly in Java. Right. Okay, great. So I do know some of us may not be very familiar with Java, and but we still want to build packages like the custom connectors. So that's what we are going to explore in the session on how can you use connector builder to build custom connectors without having to know Java. That's what we're going to get to today. Here is the agenda. <clears throat> Vineet is going to uh, talk about what Connector Builder is and who's the audience, what can you do with it, and how is it different from our SDK. And Vipul is going to show us how can you create a custom connector 
in just a couple of minutes. And then we will showcase how do you publish a connector? How do you edit a connector which is already built? We'll also show you some Docs Portal reference content on uh, what kind of material is available for you to learn about. And we'll also talk about upcoming meetup. Before we start, I also have something interesting for you. Because you are attending this meetup, we have a giveaway for you. So by joining us today, you will be entered to win one of the three swag packs. Winners will be notified through the email. If you are interested to know more about what are the official rules, here is the link for you to check it out. So this swag pack will consist of these uh, swags you can see on the right side of this slide. Okay, let's get started. Vipul, do you want to help us understand what Connector Builder is all about and how can it help our developers who may not have expertise in Java, but who can still build packages or connectors with this? I can take yeah, this one and Vip yeah. Vipul Thank can you. talk about Oh, sorry. Yes, uh, I meant Vineet. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, no worries. Yeah, uh, once again, welcome everyone. And I see a lot of responses when Arjun asked the question about uh, our SDK and how if you work with them. Now, why do we need a connector builder, right? Like we have the SDK today and you can build your custom packages and you can start using them in your automations, right? Then why the need for a connector builder? Now, if you've ever used the SDK, you know that to build a package, it's not an easy job, right? you would first need to understand the API that you want to build a package for. You would need to understand all of the endpoints. You would need to know what parameters go in, what parameters come out, how is the request formatted, and what can you expect from the response, right? With this understanding, you would need to code the endpoint, the request, the response, and you would have to manage the authentication information as well. Right? It's no short task. Typically, based on our survey, it takes at least a week to a couple of weeks for developers to build uh, any custom package for an enterprise application. Right? To reduce this pain, to make it faster for customers and users like you to build packages, we, we are introducing Connector Builder. We hope that you will find a lot of value in this tool. And we want you to use this tool as a new way to integrate any application with Automation Anywhere. So it's a brand new integration mechanism for you to connect Automation Anywhere with any other application that works with REST APIs. So that is why we are introducing Connector Builder. And the value propositions are, are three value propositions. First is you can build a connector package in minutes. Right. And Vipul is going to show a demo of this, how he'll build the connector in minutes, in a few minutes from now. Once you build the connector package, you can use it within your API tasks as well as bot tasks. If you don't know about API task, that's fine. API tasks, in, in one line, API tasks are automations that run on cloud. You build the automation and you forget about where it should run, right? You don't even have to connect your device to the control room. You can simply run the API task. It will run on Automation Anywhere Cloud and give you the response. So that's what API tasks are. Vineet, I believe you also wanted to know like uh, how many of our participants are comfortable with the uh, uh, APIs. So should we turn on the poll now? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that, Arjun. So can you let us know, like, what's your level of expertise with uh, REST API? I hope all of you are able to see our poll, right? Okay, great. We'll just give a couple of more minutes. Yeah, I think we are set. So let's share the results. I hope you are able to see the <clears throat> results here, right? So 
a lot of folks are comfortable uh, with REST APIs. We can see like 13% uh, claim to be expert, 48% intermediate, and at least 40% have beginner knowledge on REST API. Thank you. You can take over. Yeah. I think that's that's a good mix of uh, REST API knowledge. Sure. Right. So I see quite a few of you are already experts. That's great. For those of you who are intermediate or beginners, I think one suggestion I'd like to make is play with any REST API in, in a tool like Postman. If you start playing with it, you will get more curiosity about how does an endpoint work, what parameters need to go in, and how does the server respond when you send in a couple of parameters. I think the best way for you to learn about REST APIs is install Postman and play with this, the pet store API, right? That's that's the uh, standard uh, free set of APIs that Swagger provides you. And you, you will, you know, reach from beginner to intermediate in no time, right? And if you work on it for a few more days, you can also reach the expert level. So, and there's plenty of, uh, you know, videos available on YouTube on how to learn REST APIs. So if you spend a, a couple of days, I'm sure you will reach the intermediate, somewhere between intermediate and expert in, in no time, right? So this is a very, very steep learning curve. Anybody can learn it, literally, right? Now, why Arjun asked this question is because if you want to use Connector Builder, some knowledge about REST APIs is, is required. It's required for you to make sure you build the package in a right way. If you're building the package for a set of developers that are on your team or on your company, you want to make sure that they are able to consume your package without any you know, a lot of documentation or without any errors. It should be intuitive enough for them to use those packages. And hence, it becomes important for you to build the connector package in a very easy to understand way. And what I mean by easy to understand, there's ways in which you can supply hints, there's ways you can, you can simplify the authentication information, you can simplify various CRUD actions that you perform, right? So that's how it, it becomes important for you to make a package which is simple to consume by your bot creators. So that was a quick introduction about Connector Builder. Now, what you're going to see in the next uh, 30 minutes, 30 to 60 minutes is, we are going to show you a live demo or a live build of, of a MongoDB connector, right? We, we are going to build a connector for Mongo database, right? And the, the use case is, I like I told you, I have a small business, I have a small portal where customers can browse my catalog and then call me up and place an order, right, for chocolates. Let's say my requirement is, I want to be able to update my product catalog every day, right? Every morning I will update, um, you know, my dark chocolates are, are out of stock, you know, milk chocolates are in stock, so and so forth, right? I want to update those values in an Excel file and my website uses a Mongo database to fetch this, this product information. So I want a bot to run, read my Excel file and upload that data into the Mongo database so that my website has, has always the right information available for my customers. I'm, I'm hoping the use case is pretty clear. So we are going to read an Excel file and upload the data to a Mongo database. Right, so that's the use case here. Yeah, I see a few thumbs up, so thank you. Um, so I would like to pass it on to Vipul now to uh, to show you the demo, and I'm I'm sure you all are excited to look at the look at the tool, how it looks, and what are the improvements we've made since we first launched it in uh, uh, April this year. So over to you, Vipul. All the best. Yep. Thank you, Vinay. Hello everyone. I hope you guys understand like what we need trying to achieve in a few minutes, right? So not not in a week, but uh, in a minute. 
so uh connector factory so basically uh before i before i start jumping into the into the actual development space i just try to explain you uh these are the nothing but the building the package automatic so if previously the if you, if you understand the legacy way like legacy ways like you have to write the java code on top of the sdk you need to maintain the code that's a, one of the big challenge if you are sharing the package and if somebody want to change your package you have to maintain the code you have to update the code and based on that you need to share the share the package okay every infrastructure changes related to this we have developed in a, in a automation anywhere in the cr side right you don't have to worry about to maintain the code you don't have to wor uh, worry about the versioning and it's purely available on the api task and the board task both. so it's totally headless if you want to run on cloud it can run if you want to run it on local device it can run on top of that but just little information you might have uh, you should know about the rest api how to design the apis how to how to how to acquire the apis i mean if if any saas product has their documentation specifically on the swagger specifically on the postman or they have some api documentation live you have to just read it and you have to just understand what they are so just uh, let me let me share my screen and i can i can give a couple of more ideas how to build a connector and how to fulfill the Venus requirement because he want to update his chocolate website uh, every day. So based on based on his maintaining the Excel sheet, like he want to he want to read the Excel data and push into the cloud Mongo. Okay. For that Vinit has shared just, just shared with me like he has maintaining the cloud Mongo DBTB for his website. And here is the structure that he want to maintain. Okay, and uh, this is pretty pretty free account. Uh, if you guys want to set up, you just log in into the MongoDB Mongo Mongo.com and you, you will get a database access for the free for trial. Okay, so here is the requirement like I have a couple of items. Uh, it has a pro, uh, product ID, uh, currency, tag, item name, variety name, right? So this, uh, this, this is the basic schema that you want to maintain. Now, Next, what like if I if I will jump into the SDK, like it will take me a week, or I if if I don't know the Java, right? I, I need to ask for the help, right? Nothing, uh, uh, you you don't have to do anything now, okay? So I jump into the actual phase where we try to build this build this connector within within a few minutes, okay? So uh, the connectors are available under the package, which are like part of the managed step, okay? So if you have proper rights. You can go here, you have the list of the published package and you have the connectors. You can start a journey from while, while, uh, while clicking on the create connector. Uh, let me just go ahead uh, with, let's say cloud. Okay. And yeah, the base URL is, is required for now. Uh, so let me just try to fulfill the base URL. Okay, I have it. Vipul, while you are starting on this, uh, there's a question mm -hmm. like, what are the specific permissions you need to see this connector package oh, okay. window? Yeah, I suppose to tell you. Anyways, let me let me just try to go ahead with that. Okay. So let me just see if I have. Okay, I don't have any. Okay, connect to it. So this is the permission that uh, we are looking for. So inside the package manager, you may have the view packages. Inside the view packages, this is the new permission that we have introduced for the connector factory. So if if you don't have this permission, then you can see only the published package. If you have this permission, you are allowed to create and publish the package. So this permission is required. Okay. Thank okay. you. I hope it's clear. Yeah, thank yes. you. Please proceed. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was there in the okay. So this is my base where well actually I'm trying to uh I'm trying to uh hit my REST API to publish uh publish a publish a Mongo data. And when I create it, it will be redirect to the corrector UI. Okay. I will explain you why. Can you clarify yeah. a little on what is that base URL and why do you? Yeah, that's it? what. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm going to on that point uh, one okay. by one. So just 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 for five minutes. Just just hold for the five minutes. Okay. So yeah, this is the base. This is the base UI. Like you can start your your connector definition. You are here. You can start your connector definition building. So this is your this is your connector name now. 
let's start from the authentication that's that's a, one of the basic requirement when you start building the any any kind of REST api right so when you toggle it on it will start with the authentication okay right now connector fact is supporting a four type of authentication if you select the basic it will allow you to uh, hit any kind of api i mean call any kind of api which which support a basic kind of authentication along with the username and password and the best part is we are maintaining the session while you are running the board okay so it's it's just one type job like uh, when you start when, when you start authentication the rest of the action will carry forward the session you don't have to maintain it okay? i will show you during the demo so that is it's pretty much clear but uh, right now i am I'm, I'm i'm showing how to design the connectors if you want and i will giving give, giving the example with the mongo connector okay over two we are also supporting the over two uh, along with so if if you if you want any kind of over two communication any SaaS application, right? You need to start from here. So this is this is a way like you can start with a new connection. You have to just define the uh, over two connection. If the connect if the connection token is part of the query parameter header parameter, it, uh, you can just select it. If you give the name as a as a header key like or as a query parameter key, you have to define it over here. So by default, it will take the auth authorization as a key. Okay, and the prefix will be like sometimes it it's a bear or it can be blank. It's it's up to like how the, how the SaaS application designed their API. Okay, and here I can show you like so this is our fourth connection. Here you can see there are multiple connections are already built. We are supporting some of the pre-built connections like pre-refined connections. Uh, some of the settings are already there. You can also define your custom custom uh, OAuth two connection. Right. Uh, in this demo, we are not going with that over to connection, but basically we are looking forward for the API key. Nowadays, most of the applications support the API key, right? If you look for the Atlassian, if you look at for uh, MongoDB, okay, many applications support the API key. If you have API key, you can just select this API key and the name of the key that you are looking for, okay? Uh, for the MongoDB, it's a API hyphen key. That, that we don't need to write it. I, I will tell you like, you don't have to write it manually. I will show you like what is the magic behind the, uh, this import API definition. Okay, but I'm just explaining. And the custom, this is one of the important authentication mechanism uh, we have introduced in such a way that, for example, you don't have a OAuth, you don't have a basic, you don't have a API key, right? Any, some of the SaaS application require the login, required uh, username password as a body and it will give you some token and that token you you have to carry forward for the rest of the actions so this is a custom authentication where you can hit the authentication api so that you don't have to worry about any any predefined authentication maybe not support for example if you look at our, our automation in our software that actually support the custom authentication kind like you have to you have to hit the authentication API with the, with the kind of user and password and it will return you the token and that token you have to carry forward for the rest of the rest of the action. So that's with this kind of use case we are looking for the custom authentication. Now I will show you the magic. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's say uh, you don't have any time like uh, uh, I see the Mongo, right? So uh, Mongo, Mongo, Mongo or many SaaS applications are actually providing the swagger documentation. Okay, maybe you don't understand the swagger, you don't understand the postman, or you are not familiar with the with the API. But if you have this kind of sample document ready, okay, then within a few seconds, we are able to uh, build the connectors, everything from uh, from the scratch. I mean, you don't have to worry about like which parameter you have to. I will show you. So let let's start from the postman collection. I have one postman collection, for example, yeah, post postman for the Mongo, right? If I import it you can see here all the accents will be immediately come and you can see here there are all the endpoints headers the request body everything will be will be will be came out automatically okay so this is uh this is one of the way uh we are also supporting the url case okay so let me show you so this is one of the github repository mentioned by microsoft where you can find all major SaaS applications so i got off Okay, so this is one of the MongoDB Swagger document. I just find the raw document of this. I just copy this and paste it. You can see here. Okay, might be you are not see like, because uh, it, it's importing too fast, so might be you are not uh, see the changes. So let me refresh it. So it will erase all the previous action. 
Okay, now it's clear. And I will go with the URL. Here it is, right? And now you can see here, right? This Mongo Swagger support API key authentication and the name is already come along with that. Okay, so we are reading the Swagger with all the smaller, smaller details and try to fill all the required information. But make sure like you have to review all this action once so that it will not create any kind of problem or it um, yeah and i will show you like how you how you confirm your apis are perfectly configured or not okay for that i mean just for sake of simplicity i have one one prepared swagger okay okay so let me start uh, with very basic okay but before before that right so this icon is not looks like a mongo i also want to imports one of the icon that actually looks like a mongo right so i have this there we go okay so this is this is how you can also sub uh, create a package along with the icon uh, you don't have to uh, make it like a static or some some system defined icon okay certain limitation we have like uh, right now we are only supporting 4kb icon it's only only, uh, only supporting sh that's a restriction okay now let me start designing so that i will i will explain you how how if you are pretty much familiar about the postman and any kind of rest api it's very easy if you, if you are not let me explain you how it works and how 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 you need to define it okay. so let me take this action insert document but so we are supporting total five type of rest action get post code delete patch this is the endpoint and you can see here the full URL, how it comes, right? So you need to see this base URL, okay? Now this base URL coming to the picture, okay? The base URL is your application base URL, which actually hosted, uh, miss your, any any of the SaaS application hosted somewhere with some of the identity, right? And that's called the host IP or host URL, okay? So every application, if you deployed it, okay? Uh, some of the cloud application is a, is a, is a, is a global that will always remain same like this. Okay, this is this is a common for all the all the kind of Mongo, Mongo cloud app uh, deployment. But if you have any any domain specific, this base URL will keep changing based on your deployment or based on your, based on your deployment or or based on your plan how how you how you purchase the SaaS application plan, right? Uh, so this base application remains same, but it's still optional to keep it. I can, I can, I mean, the base world in the 33 will remain, uh, remain as a required field, but in 34, we are removing as, a, as, a, as an optional field. Uh, during the design time, when you, when you design the bot, you can, you can still allow the user to change the base world. Because as I told you, right, this package can be used by multiple user, multiple customer. And this, this package, based on the customer, the base URL will keep changing based on the requirement, okay? So base URL, you, you have to maintain in such a way that you can keep change, okay? So I will show you during the demo so that you will get a uh, better understanding, but let's start the design in the API, okay? Now, if you look at, this is this is one of uh, this is one of the endpoint, which actually trying to insert a one of the Mongo document into the scheme, uh, into, in, into the database, okay? Now, very simple. Any REST API has a path parameter, query parameters. Okay, we are supporting. We we also have we, we also have like some of uh, one small example over here. Like if you want to parameterize, like some of the IDs will keep changing. That user has to put during the design time, during the board design time, right? Then it will be like curly bracket. Okay, so for example, if I put like this. Here it will definitely give me the error, right? Because my this product ID and product status variable are not defined over here. Okay? So yeah, they, they, these are these are the simple structure that we need to maintain. I'm just reverting because I don't require it for for, uh, for the for the Mongo input. I will show you like how it looks like. So path variable. So let me just create one new for for just understand. So we are supporting the two type of parameters path and query. It's it's just simple. Uh, simple terms in the in the rest api and the key will be like what exactly you are you, you are passing to your api okay so that that will be the key the value is like uh, the value of your path variable and value of your query parameter but let's uh, let's pause over here okay this is the hard coded so if you want to keep 
keep your value as a hard coded you don't uh, you don't want the user will actually change it i will give you one one of the example where user don't want to change it user can keep it as a hard coded but in this case like for example if if user is going to change it like you have to select as a user provided okay if this field is mandatory or not obviously the path field is always be mandatory but query query field may be mandatory or or optional right you can decide it for here if you provide the optional value you can keep it this label okay so this label will be visible while designing the bot okay so uh, again i will give you the example uh, of the mongo i will show you like how this package will looks like on the designer on the bot designer side so that you will better understand like what this label means okay and this description means for example right uh, this app the uh, data api app id maybe somebody will not understand this term right so you have to provide some description so uh, here like app id of at last mongo cloud right so it's 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 might be might be easy for for user to understand okay so this description will be visible on the bot editor okay so here you can see here this is path parameter this is this is my key because i have mentioned in the endpoint this is user provided because user will keep changing based on the requirement and multiple if this package is using by multiple customer then this this id will keep changing based on a custom okay so this is label it, it doesn't look like good right so i'm going to change like uh uh, Mongo app ID, right? Okay, right. So it's look. Uh, so so this label will be visible on board editor. I will just save it. Okay. Now next header. Okay. So these are the uh, these are like also again like accept content type and many many other many other headers. Like if you want to add, if you want to delete, uh, you, uh, it's it's up to it's up to the base on it's up to the rest API that we are looking for. Uh, this headers like user is not going to change most of the times. Okay, that's why I'm going to make it as a as a hard. This is one of the example that I want to I want to show you. Like I don't want to show this extra fields that that actually make the user confused during the board design time. Okay, so I just I just make it hard coded because there is there is no change there is no requirement to change during the board design time. Okay, now here it's a request body. That's that's a most important part. Right now, we are supporting a three type of uh, request body, JSON, form data, and form URL encoded. If I just go to the form data, okay, and if you look at right now, we are supporting a form data as a tax and file. If you if you know about the multi-part file support, right? So this is this is kind of the form. This is time. This is kind of the form data. Okay. And if you want to just simply pass the task, uh, you can just Select the key type as a text, and you can put um, any 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 font uh, like this. Hard coded, maybe it's 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 totally based on the requirement and font uh, as text. Okay, and just save it. Right here, we don't have any requirement to to provide a file type and form URL encoded. Okay. So this these two we are supporting right now. Here we have a requirement of the JSON. Okay. So let's say you have some sample JSON. Okay. So while while importing this uh, this pack uh, this Swagger document, it will it will all it it uh, it already give me one one of the sample JSON. But for this demo, I have already one of the sample that I want to push. Okay. So this uh, uh, these are the fields that actually required. To hit this API, this is this is one of the things that you need to keep in mind. Like this, this this kind of JSON you will find on the Swagger, or you may find into the proper documentation. Okay, so you can just you can just read those documentation, or if you import it, it will it will it will maximum try to extract the Swagger information so that you don't have to much worry about the format. Okay, now this document is always be a dynamic. If a couple of people are here, like if, if they understand the Mongo, Mongo is a dynamic schema, right? You can change your schema accordingly. So I want to build this package for, for the Winnie, right? For his chocolate website, right? And this is the schema that he want to he want to support and store into the demo. Okay. So that's why I keep this schema as a, as a document. And this is one of the sample. Okay. So this is not the final one that actually I'm trying to add. This is a, one of the sample. You can see here, this is a sample, right? Okay, and when I import it, you guys can see here it will automatically pass and it will actually give give up to the lift node. Okay, now you can decide 
what data that I want to feed, what data that that you have to keep it hard coded. Okay. Uh, okay. So what I need to do is I just need to define what if it is hard coded or if it is user provided, if it is mandatory, if what is the type. So right now we are supporting a string number boolean and list. This is also the outer box. We are not supporting a list of objects or list of any kind of string. But if you have, if you are just providing inside the value, then we uh, we will pass it as it is. Okay. So that's a that's a future enhancement we are looking forward for this. But right now there are four types we are supporting. Okay. And if you look at the ID, it will it will automatically extract if it is a number, and this is also the number. This is also the string, right? So. Uh, we uh, we are passing this JSON in such a format like you don't have to worry about the data types we are already maintaining it. Okay. Now what I should do is let me just hard code it this. Things. Okay. I don't want or I, I I may not worry about this this. Things. Okay. The most important part that will keep changing is the document, right? Because the data is I'm reading from the Excel and I'm just keep changing the data that that is going to be inserted. So I will provide a as a user provided field is mandatory of course and i will say like uh, product id right so this is how i put this is also mandatory i will say item price this is currency mandatory subtask item name variant name weight okay Okay, I just keep all this field as a mandatory so that that will always be required while inserting the data. Okay, so this is this is one of the structure that I'm maintaining. I'm just saving so that right now there is no auto, auto save feature. So you have to make, make sure like you always save it uh, every like five, 10 minutes so that it will not be lost. Okay, now how should I know like this, this configuration is perfectly fine or not? Okay, that's, that's the most difficult part because I don't want to create a package, try it, and then come back over here. So we have introduced this test feature. Okay, very straightforward. This is the, my full URL. This is my uh, the path that I'm making. This app ID that I need to put. Okay, so what, what should I do? I just put it in the path parameter. Let me just take. Okay, so this is my path. Okay, what is the key? And here is my sample. Okay, let's see if. Uh, okay, I. Okay, browse collection. Good. So you can see here, collection is now different. Okay, so I just change my collection. Uh, data source will be like this. Uh, this one, chocolate network. Okay, this looks good. Let me try to hit it. Okay, okay. There is some problem. Okay, let me check. Can you do, do you know like is this the deployment is correct? Really? Hey, yeah, I think it's trying to use the Asia Pacific server, I believe, right? Okay, let me just wake up. Let's switch it to US East. Ah, uh, okay, sure. Let me do that. Okay, so here is uh uh, so, some sometimes this kind of issue will happen. Like uh, if you okay, so this is this is one of the challenge in the in the cloud deployment. If your if your region is uh, okay, so our servers may be hosted on the US, and you have uh, deployed your SaaS application in Mumbai, and that is actually restricted environment. Then this kind of API that may not work. Okay, it may work on your on your devices, but it may not work on from the cloud devices. So just make sure like uh, you have correct configuration and you have correct uh, level of regions so that it will always be accessible from, from our cloud environments. 
So sorry for that. I I just I just keep uh, things a little bit faster. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what happened just now was uh, Whipple's Mongo database is located somewhere in India, whereas the connector builder environment, which is automation anywhere, that is located in US. Right. The Mongo database does not allow traffic from US. And hence, when Whipple was trying to test the package, you saw the error. Now, what Whipple is doing is he has switched to a control room, which is located in India, the same region as the Mongo instance. Now, the network traffic will be uh, allowed to flow. Correct. So let me just try it very quickly. So I just try it like this. Uh, this one I'm just making as optional, as a hard-coded. Save it, request body is perfect. Okay, this looks good. I just go into the test. Just find get app ID. API key, this looks good. Okay, so you can see here, the data is getting inserted. And now this way, like you can get confirmation like your API configuration is perfectly fine, okay? And while looking for the things, you can see here, the data is getting inserted. You can see here, okay? So this is how like you can reconfirm. And this is one of the advantage like uh, while you are while you are trying to test it, okay? So for example, if you are trying to parse your response very quickly, okay? So you don't have to worry about like to understand the API's documentation. You have to just hit your API, just understand your request, uh, sorry, response body, come back over here. You have to just put it like this, import it, and your response is getting ready, okay? Now, let me talk about the response, okay? REST API has a three type of default response in our package, okay? One is about the status code. The status code I just showed, uh, so you is like, uh, let me just hit it, okay. I can just hit it. Okay, duplicate key error, no worries. We can change the key. Okay, this is also the one of the key that is already exist, okay. So you can see here, this is the status, okay? One is a rec uh, response body. The third one is the response headers. Okay, these are the default response. The package will automatically return to the user. Okay, along with that, if you don't want to parse any JSON, sometimes like if you look at uh, this JSON, right? Okay, this JSON doesn't have it. So I will, I will show you this one as well very quickly so that you, you understand like what is, what is the use of, uh, what is the use of uh, the response parser. Okay. Okay. So you look like this. Okay. So if you, if 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 any bot will actually if any action will actually return this JSON. Okay. So we have to process. We have to do extra processing on top of your response is like about JSON parser. You have to you have to extract the document. On top of that, you have to extract the price, you have to extract the currency. It's it, it's it's based on the requirement that you need to extract it. But what we need to do is we just copy the response, go to the configuration, response, and just import it. Okay. So these are the output of your of your action, of your bot. Okay, so that you don't have to pass the JSON. That's the extra facility that, that actually uh, help the user to, to utilize this item name directly instead of like just just going just just getting the response. Okay, and and parsing the JSON. Okay, so this is this is one of the responsibility of the JSON. Okay, and I will I will I will show you the, this as well uh, during uh, during the bot execution. Okay, so for now. Let me just quickly set up all these actions so that we can go ahead and actually build a package. Okay. So just for now, what I need to do is I need to just quickly So 
product ID, item price, parentheses, So, you just set up all fields are required, just, just make it all fields are required. Oh, collection, what I should do? Let's make it hardcore, just for now. Okay. So, these are the dynamic fields that will keep changing and, and, and the data source database and collection will keep changing. But actually, in the in the real-time use case, right, you need to keep it user-provided because if you if this package is going to be shared like across multiple people, then uh, you uh, the, those production environment, staging environment, UTC uh, environment, every, every environment has a different, different level of the database and schema, right? So, uh, user will actually keep, keep, keep them changing. Okay, so this is uh, this is not real time, so that I'm just keeping as the hard coded. Uh, if I want to find it, so let me just try to uh, all make it hard coded. Request body. So if what I if I want to find something, just let me let okay. So we can do one thing, right? So let's try to change it to find by ID. Okay, so I'm just changing it, find document by ID. Okay, and this ID is a user provided product ID. I make it required and these are the hard coded. Okay, all are hard coded, and this one will be user provided. I just save it, update the document, a uh, similar flow. I just have to make it okay, hard coded. Okay, so for update, again, I have the schema, I'm just going here. So this is one of the sample schema that I'm, I'm going to follow. Okay, and you can see here the schema is getting populated. This will I will make it as a hard coded. ID will be product ID. Okay, absurd, I will keep it value as a false. Absurd, okay, good. This is all set. So, and the, okay, let me do one thing. Let me just, uh, okay, I will show you like, uh, just delete one, but I will not set up this one. Uh, this way I will show you like, uh, tilt also working, like how it looks like. So I just put this. And this, okay. And what I should delete, right? I just want to delete one of the ID that will actually match any of the ID. Okay, I just test this. Some, okay, deleted count one. And here it will show me, okay, it's not getting deleted. Okay, something. Okay, it should be deleted. Something else got deleted, so let me. Okay, 200. Then I go back. Okay, now it's remain one. Okay, so one got deleted. Okay, so this is how you can test it. You can configure it for the time being. Let me just remove those actions okay and let's assume that we have set up authentication we have insert find by id and let's make it update by id right we are actually 
updating by id let us save it okay let me update the icon so that it it looks pretty good save it okay now it looks good Close it. so here you can see like we have total four action along with the authentication and there is no version at all okay so we have to publish it first so that it will looks like uh, what the first version will be introduced so you can see here this is the scratch pro uh, scratch project okay my bad just give me a second i need to connect with my sorry for that okay so it looks like like uh, my package is not yet published so it will always give me the 1.0.0 okay that means like it will auto generate and you can see here the version is auto generated okay user doesn't have any control but the next time i will show like how it looks like it's different than this one okay but this is a scratch project that's why it's showing me the 1.0.0 so when i publish it it will take a couple of minutes to publish here we go right it's gone where it go it go into the published it here it is how it looks like i can see all my actions so you can see here right i mean uh, when i started maybe around 30 minutes in the 30 minutes i didn't write any code i just imported one of the documents if i know this document i'm just explaining you that's why it took 30 minutes but if if i'm the expert i i just import it i just recorrect it all the fields it will it will definitely take me like around five to ten minutes max right and it's always ready i mean you don't have to maintain the code quality you don't have to maintain the the security fixes the security vulnerability everything is managed by uh, everything is managed by ourselves right so it's it's pretty easy for you you have to just learn which tip okay now how it looks like let me just go ahead okay where is uh i, I set up one of the skeleton uh to read the excel file that venice, ha venice has provided me i will show you like how it looks like so Vinit is pretty old fashioned, right? So it's maintaining the Excel. Uh, so let's look how it looks like. So, okay. It looks like this. He is maintaining some of the product code, price, uh, some of the var uh, variant name, item, catalog, chocolate, right? This is a similar structure that he, he actually uh, used to, right? And I'm just reading the Excel and i'm just updating if the product is successfully updated or not okay now what i should do is i just need to authenticate right that's a, that's the first action that we need to do and here we go you have the base url here here i, I told you right this is the base url that that may keep changing based on your SaaS product okay so that's why we are providing the base url as as an editable field so that whenever any customer is going to use this package you can change it okay here i'm just keeping as it is it can be from credential as well and okay api token right so i'm just picking one of the api token from from here okay now here is the session name okay so you can change it accordingly by default it's it's always by default so the if the, if you are using the same package on the multiple way right make sure your session name is not getting conflict because if i'm going to use the authentication second time like this okay like this right and if i'm if i'm keep using the default name both sessions will get conflict okay so always remember like your session is always have a proper name but i have only just one session just to store the data i just read actual putting into the loop uh, i'm just trying to update the data Okay, here we go. Okay, how it looks like. You can see all the descriptions are there. Okay, this is this this is I haven't written. It's already extracted from the Swagger document. Okay, so that's very pretty easy. Like you don't have to worry about documentation as well. It always be yeah easy. And now what what else? Your app ID, product ID, price, currency, all the default value are coming alone. Right now you have to change it. So let's do it right uh what i need to do is 
uh, app ID, right? So let me put app ID hard coded right now. This is my app ID, okay? Product ID. I'm just going to remove where should I get it from? Excel row, okay? And this is coming from one of the key. Okay, so this is the product ID. Let me look at the Excel, like how it looks like. Okay, it's a product ID. And this insert. So I'll just keep it like very simple. I'm just doing quickly because if anybody is from automation anywhere down, they already know like how to do this. Well, let's see. Okay, it was stuck. Okay. Okay. And I'm just putting offset like if the product is missing, like when it has added some more product into the Excel, so it will not break, it will actually create a product instead of just failing or I just keep to update, right? Uh, okay, now one of the things that you need to keep in mind about the response, okay, the save the outcome to the variable, okay. Now, this is optional field, like if you want to store your response, but you can see here carefully, maybe it's a, it's a, small so i can little bit zoom it okay the response of this action will be saved into the dictionary when the bot runs the dictionary key will be the response status code and header as i told you right this three is always be there okay so if the response is json or xml might be like uh, if you are looking forward for for those kind of response and if the response is very big that you don't want to parse it and you want to parse it manually then this response contains the full json that you can Take it on and you can even pass it by your own the status code you can take the decision if it is failed then you can have to do something else if it is success then you have to do something else right so you can take decision based on this sometimes the header is also important so we are also keeping the response header along with that if you remember these two fields are additionally that we have added into the response just okay so this field is also extracted match count okay so this is what like I told you, okay, yeah. So let me just zoom it out, okay. Uh, this is, I don't want it now. So I just disable for now. Okay, so I'm doing authentication. I'm reading the Excel, I'm looking for every row and I'm just dumping my, updating my data to the database okay this is straightforward i have configured all the fields that i configured during the design time okay so once again i want to show you how it, it was designed and how it looks like so that the comparison is actually the better to understand how it looks uh, how how we actually we design it okay okay i guess let's do it later and there is there is one surprise that i will show you but let's let's make it let's make it run Okay, it's running on my different window, so might be it's not visible to you. Okay, now it's coming to this window, correct? So oh, it's getting not found category. Okay, might be I have missed the spelling. Okay, perfect. I have missed that. That's correct. Okay, let me. 
okay yes i did that mistake so category okay i'm again starting oh sorry my bad okay so it right Oops, already running. Okay, there is our device is busy because I canceled the last one. Okay, till the time the device is getting freed, I can show you one thing. Okay, that is most important. Uh, let's say Vidit may have a requirement like. Uh, he has one one more API request. Like he want to dump this data in a bunch, not in not in a loop, right? Uh, so there is there is one one API is exist for the MongoDB. Like you can dump your data into the into the patch, right? What I need to do? Okay, it's very simple using the connector factory. Okay, but if you if 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 you if you think about the traditional way, like you have you have kept your code somewhere, you have to go there, you have to create new command. <clears throat> You need to write some code. You have to build it. You have to make some quality check. You have to make some security check, and then ship to the then then ship to the finish, right? Here it's pretty easy. You have to just go here, and there is an edit icon. Okay. Now if I go to the edit, here we go, right? This is the what we left last time. Okay. I go here. Okay. I can say like uh. Insert batch, insert by batch, for example. I can add some description and I add it. Right? I need to fill the, uh, I, I just need to fill the detail. Okay, so let me just uh, open my swagger or something else so that I can get this information, maybe some documentation. So I have the documentation, so I'm just looking around. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, here it is. Okay, I found it. Oh, just give it a second. Insert many, right. So I'm just copy this here, fill this, X and insert many. Okay. You can see here there is error, right? What is this? This is for the path parameter. I just put the key. I just uh, well, well, it will be optional, but I'm just saying API app ID. Yeah, app ID. I'm just adding it, right? This is user provided required. Uh, maybe header is required, right? So you can say. I have content type. It's always be a hard coded because user is not going to change. And if you if if you look at our last uh, when I when I was designing the board, right? This this wheels are not visible on the on the board edit, right? Why this is because we have keep it as a hard coded. So hard coded things will not visible to user. So that's uh, that's how you can hide a couple of information from user that is not required by user to change it. And this is how I do the manual, right? So this is this is sometimes tricky. Uh, that's why I always prefer uh, the Postman collection. Okay, so what it will be? Okay, so something like this, but this is always be a array. Okay. So just give me a second. I just reconfirm. Okay. So data source, data type, documents. It's a uh, documents. This one. Okay. And import. So this is how it looks like. So I just keep it hard code 
hard code, hard code, the document is user provided. And you can see here, right? It, it will look like this because right now we are not supporting a array of objects. So if you have a list and inside the list there is an object, right now we are supporting as a, as a full input instead of like we are segregating the each individual each in the individual uh, object into the one list and then user can feed each and every list okay so i will show you how it looks like but uh, this will look like this i'll just save it close it and i just republish it right it's so quick okay it doesn't take much time for me to just add one one new api right now here is the version control okay if you feel like if it is a patch, you can just patch it. The version will automatically generate it for you. If it is like some bigger changes, some breaking changes, right? Uh, I mean, not breaking changes, but some uh, some some changes that actually addition or uh, deletion of the some of the existing API, then it's a minor. And if it is a major change which actually break your previous port with the new version, with the new version of packet, then it's a major version. Okay. This is a new addition API, so I just keep it minor. Then the version will be the 1.0 uh, 1 .1 and I just publish it. So just a few seconds, right? Again, and I just uh, refresh it. I just go back, package, cloud, see? The version is available. I just go back to the editor. I just see for Mongo. Here we go. Right. So batch insert is here. Now you can see here how it looks like. Okay. So if it is array, you have to provide a full array list here. Okay. If you want to make a, some substitution, the substitution is also available. Like uh, for example, if this ID is coming like dynamic okay then you can put like a product id and the substitution will be like a product id and you can substitute with any of the variable that you you may have for example the sample string like this add it okay so it will it will, it will work, work like this okay so we are we are going to enhance this in the in the later releases but for now we have to bear uh, you have to bear with us for this now let's try to run this bot might might be my bot runner is getting read up okay it's already running okay so i'm not going to run now because of uh you know like uh, this bot runner is actually stuck in, in between but it's pretty simple for me like just when it ask me some of the requirement i just build the package while i'm explaining you okay and it's ready to use now we need can use this package i just save it now if I want to ship it, right, uh, then there is a there is a way. Uh, you don't have to uh, export the bot or you just add the bot, right? Uh, so if I just go ahead, I'll go back to the again. There is a download icon. Okay, so if I just click on download, this package will start downloading. Now, I just share this package with Vinit, and Vinit can start using this package by by his own, right? So, and he can he can start building the bot. So this is how uh, how the things are working in the connector factory. Um, if you guys have any question, you can you can ask me, or you might have a question and answer session, right? So okay. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for automating my inventory management, people. I'll certainly try to use your your bot for my small little business. Yeah, please use it and let me know how 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 pretty like working is working or or if you want to change it, you know, right? I can I can change it within a few seconds. So let me know. Great, thank you so much. Thank and you. I think that is a good segue to answer some of the questions around how can you edit a package when you have already published it and Correct. certain constraints around it, like. Will your edited version impact your existing bots or uh, will it not? Okay, let's talk about that for a bit. Yeah, sure. So 
definitely so uh, it is totally based on the uh, the changes are uh, which user is going to take it right for example if they have removed some of the apis or some of the actions if they have they have modified the some of the apis then it's a breaking change and it's a major version changes whenever you are changing such such things like you uh, you have to properly update in such a way that it always be backward compatible or you have to deprecate that 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 api and you have to create a new action Okay, uh, might be you can just rename that action with deprecated and you have to create a new action so that the older user may not impact by those. So those are the standard practice that while, while, while designing the package you have to take care. And it's a similar fundamental is also applicable over here. So when you design the action, make sure that is always be a long term so that you have to choose the API which is the latest, not the older version of API. Always try to use the latest version of API so that it all, you always get some longer term of the support. But anyhow, if the API is getting changed or migrated or deprecated, you have to keep that action as it is. You have to create a new action. Okay, but if you still want to delete it, you can delete it. The 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 what what whatever the bot is actually getting you are uh, go, going to use that that is already already breaking. So user has to update the bot accordingly. With your new new version of the package. Yeah, sure. I hope this answers. And there's yeah. also a question about. Yeah, it helps. Well, thanks. There's also a question about how do you control access to a given package? If I want to restrict, uh, let's say I create a new connector package, mm -hmm. and I want to restrict access to this package only to few developers. I don't want all of the developers who have a developer account with control room to access right. that package how can i do that yeah so there is a way like uh, when you publish this package okay so just understand the one thing your role and responsibility who is actually going to create this package the package is going to be created by whoever the permission has a package creation and package management okay so if you are the package creator Okay, you have you also have the rights of the package manager. And if you look at this availability tab, so when you publish this package, this pack, package is available on the published list, and there is an availability list. You have to just try to add it in. You have to provide uh, which specific role that you want to allow to access this. The rest of the user will actually not get this package on the design tab or, or on the list tab. Okay, so here you can you can configure this, configure package visibility. So it will always restrict your package to be visible only some user. Right. Thanks. There was also a question about can you share the package without actually downloading it? Okay. I mean, uh, there are there are there there is a the the legacy way, right? Uh, so what you need to do is you can just create a sample board which actually is one of the action, and you can just export it. So that board is always be bundled with the with this package and you can just you can just share this packet might be your, your question might be uh through the cloud way like uh, without downloading something you have to share the package um uh, that i'm not much aware about but there is i, I don't I, I don't have any such information like you can share this package without downloading or uh, without downloading the bot you can share this package to somebody because this package is only only for that restricted environment like every environment has a tenant and this package is only uploaded to that particular tenant so inter tenant sharing for this package is not allowed any any by by any standard so right and there are also quite a few suggestions on the, some of the improvements that we can make people like like chandu mohammed suggested to have a beautify feature in the uh -huh. json editor Yes, we are actually highly. Uh, I mean, we are always working on on the, on your suggestion, and we actually looking around multiple solution to parse the JSON. Because nowadays all the REST APIs are migrated to JSON, and JSON is very complex. Sometimes it has a nest, nested object. It's it's very unmanageable, right? So we are we are, we are working towards that, like to support the array, to support the multi hierarchy JSON, to support a different type of the data of of the JSON, for example, if it is number, if it is a decimal, right? So those kind of things like we are looking, looking towards that. Sure. Another question that's very interesting is from Santosh. Uh, question is, will current automation anyways REST package, mm -hmm. will it be continue to be available or will Connector Builder 
replace it in future releases? I I'll try to answer this and maybe you can extend if you want. Yeah, so, rest, uh, yeah. yeah sorry, go ahead. Sure. So REST API package. So that package is meant to be used for one-off connections with a given endpoint, right? But if you find yourself using that package to connect with the same endpoint in multiple automations, I think that becomes a very good use case for you to build a package using Connector Builder. Because then it becomes very easy for you to do updates to your package and propagate those updates to all of your bot automations or API task automations instead of, you know, trying to modify each bot one by one because that's how REST, uh, that's how you've configured the REST web services package, right? So that's that's the reason. So Connector Builder will continue to exist. REST package will also be continuing to exist. Um, right. They are complementary. They, they are not, uh, you know, replacing one another. Yeah, and and I can I can I can uh, I can just uh, give you one one more point on top of the REST package, right? So might be during this session somebody has a question like uh, why don't we use the REST package instead of creating a package for the non body right? That that might be the question. So I can tell you like uh, Vinit is a not a bot developer, maybe uh, he's not a I mean he's a bot developer but he's not expert in the REST API. Not everybody in the in the bot editor like maybe expert in the REST API, and there is not not a no point of the reusability. If you are looking for if you are looking for the REST packages, right? There is no reusability. You have to keep changing, then you have to keep updating your bot, and that 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 REST APIs and all like that may not reusable. If you delete your bot, if you are or if somebody want to use the same same way, right? They have to they have to start building from scratch. They have to learn the REST API. They have to build in such a way that so that they can fulfill the same requirement. But here the requirement is build once and use use anywhere. So that's that's the main goal for this. And I guess one of the example, uh, sorry, one of the question for the OAuth session. Uh, so you are right for the OAuth. We are maintaining the session, so refresh token will keep going on every thirty minutes, or based on based on the expiration time. So we don't have to worry about refreshing token. Okay, so session is always be capture the latest token which are available in the in the OAuth session manager. Uh, but that might be the true for the basic and and API token. For example, in the CR, if you look at the automation anywhere has expiration uh, token expiration time of eight minute or ten minute. Okay, so if you are using this kind of infrastructure or SaaS application that the token getting expired in every 30 minutes, then it might be the case like you have to refresh your token uh, by 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 authentication. Okay, so that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind. Okay. Also, I'd like to extend a little bit on that um, answer, right? Uh, Vinit, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt. Uh, just as a time check, uh, can we just take one more minute to wrap this up so that we can uh, just move on to the next steps, please? Sure. So I just wanted to cover the OAuth connection feature that Vipul demonstrated earlier. In, in some ways, this feature is complementary or, or like equivalent of the easy auth feature provided by Azure, right? So what does the OAuth connection feature tell you? It, it makes sure that you have an active access, access token all the time. It okay. automatically checks the expiry of the uh, token using the refresh and using the refresh token, it ex it refreshes the access token. That's one. Second, it encrypts your access token and saves it securely in the vault. So yeah. that's according to the best security practices again. And then right. finally, you can you can create the connection once and promote its usage in various automations, right? Your automation developers can just pick the token. They don't have to configure you know, the client ID, secret, tenant ID, you know, all kinds of URLs in individual bot automation. So yeah. it is like an easy auth in a way, right? Sure. And uh, Arjun, I'll, I'd like to cover one last question which came from Chandu just now. Is there a way we can get sure. metrics on connector builder packages used across bots? Example, if MongoDB package is used in 10 bots in the CR. Um, well, Great question, Chandu. We do have these metrics. Uh, we we do capture telemetry based on the metadata. We don't know actually like what specific MongoDB instance are you calling, but we do know that you are calling MongoDB package in 10 bots in a given time period. 
there is a plan to expose this data in the automation command center, right? When you log into control room, go to the home page, there's automation command center. So there is plan in the future uh, by one of my fellow colleague PMs here to expose some of those metrics in the ACC dashboard. Okay. Thank you, Vipul, for that insightful thank session. You. And thank you, Vineet, for answering a lot of uh, questions. Uh, so uh, I'd like to request uh, Mr. Nirmal to share across, like, what have they uh, <clears throat> created in terms of content on the Docs portal to showcase how to use this feature? Nirmal? Yes, Arjun. Um, let me share my screen. Sure. Um, While Nirmal is uh, trying to share a screen, if you like this connector builder feature, can you just uh, share your reaction with the thumbs up or whatever you liked? Thank you. Okay, great. So Vipul and Vineet, whatever you have shared, you... see uh, how the people like the session. Nirmal, yeah. it's on yours now. Yeah. Do you, do you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. OK. Uh, yeah, thank you, Vineet and uh, Vipul, for the awesome uh, experience you uh, got us through. Uh, we saw some real-time uh, you know, uh, problems and solutions what uh, Vipul gave us. It was awesome. Thank you. So coming to the documentation, if you want to uh, you know, read about Connector Builder, you have to go to docs.automationanywhere.com. And all you have to do is search for Connector Builder. And you can click on the first link, which appears here. This will take you to the introduction page of the connector builder. Here we actually you know, explain to you uh, what, what is a connector builder, like what Vineet was explaining about. And we say what license is required uh, you know, to, to, in order to get connector builder feature in your control room. And like all about what about connector builder and how it is used. And here you see you see the, the the overview followed by the scenarios. Like you know these are the scenarios where you will be using the connector builder. And after that we we actually you know where Vineet was saying and Vipul was saying about the you know different uh, per personas involved. Here the admin actually gives the rights. And you know the pro developer takes it over and creates a, you know the packages uh, using the connector builder, tests it, validates it, and then he publishes it. So once it is published, uh, you know other people can either download it or use it in their automation to build their automations. So all these are covered here in the workflow, and here we have a wonderful video which gives a, a small demo of the connector builder. It's like a four minute video, which you can watch, which uh, shows a full workflow of, you know, using a connector builder, how to use it. This will give you a good idea. And after that, like here you see, we have a lot of topics here, which actually explains about how to, what Vipul was showing, how to create it, uh, you know, how to use it, how to configure it, how to test it. All this are covered in, all, in, this, in this sections here. And also we have a you know a live document FAQs, uh, which actually was captured from the beta release. Like the customers who have used the connector builder have you know raised many questions. All these are captured here, and this is a living document. And you can actually you know uh, look at this, and from uh, from the questions what are, we are going to get from today also we are going to add the questions here with the answers. And you know this is a living document. You can. Uh, look at it. This is this is a small intro about the connector builder, uh, you know, uh, documentation. What we have, what you can do is some features which I want to highlight on the documentation portal, which might help you guys are, you know, the watch feature here. Uh, obviously, you should be like uh, you should be logged into in order to get the things. So when you watch a topic, for example, FAQ, if we, whenever we update something, a question and answer here, you will get an intimation that 
you know, something is, has been updated here. So you can watch a topic and also, you know, a feedback here. Like when you read a topic and if you don't understand anything or if you have some suggestions for enhancements, you can click this or even you can also click the like or the dislike button and, you know, write the feedback here and, you know, tell us what is what is what. And this is going to come to us directly. And we are, you know, these are the uh, tickets we are, you know, working on a high priority to, you know, to give the answers to the customers. So please uh, make use of them. That's it from my side. Thank you very much for listening. Okay. Thank you, Nirmal. That was uh, super crisp. I hope uh, this was helpful to you. Uh, Vineet, do you have something to share? Yeah. Thanks, Nirmal. Great docs. Our docs have everything you need, guys. So please refer to them. <laughs> One last thing I wanted to call out was I've, I've read a lot of messages about folks not being able to access the feature. Um, so, so Arjun, how do I get names of all those folks? Uh, I've asked them to send an email to me, but is there a better way to get their names so that I can we can enable the feature right away, see what's wrong? Sure, I think uh, we'll get the, uh, I mean, the text for the chat. So we can just look at the names and identify who had those issues and uh, we can reach out to you. However, if you'd also like to email us, like just a generic email ID, you can use community at the rate automation anywhere.com. It'll come to us and we will uh, reach out to you and we can definitely help you out to access this feature. Yes, guys, the feature is available globally. So now with A.33 release, we just sandbox is released just now. Uh, you should be able to access it no matter what part of the globe you're located in. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Vineet. And we have, uh, we need one help from you. Like we want to reach more and more developers like you. I hope this session was useful for all of you. So that's why uh, I have put in a LinkedIn post link in the chat window. So if you could just take like uh, 30 seconds to 60 seconds and just let us know how you like the session. That way it will reach a lot more developers like you. And we would like to uh, share our knowledge about the Automation Anywhere platform, whatever the latest features we are releasing, best practices, everything on an ongoing basis. And uh, we are also going to release uh, content around this uh, connector builder shortly in Automation Anywhere University. I'll keep you posted on those content. And we also have the next upcoming meetup on the topic, uh, mastering the JSON session on July 25th. We will share uh, this links with you as well. Uh, when we post uh, the recording link uh, to all your emails, we'll also include the registration link to you. And we also have our MVP nominations live. So if you are interested to take part uh, as an uh, Automation Anywhere MVP, so please do uh, visit community.automationanywhere.com and you should be able to see the link to uh, sign up for this program. More details are available on community portal as well. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach us at community at the rate automation anywhere.com also. Okay, I hope uh, you'll share some feedback about this session on this LinkedIn post link I had shared. Thanks a lot speakers for uh, sharing your valuable time with all our developers and uh, thank you developers for joining us. I hope this was yeah. useful for you. Also in the background, we had Abhijit and Ashish helping us answer a lot of questions. Thanks a lot uh, for you guys as well. And have a good rest of your day. If there are any questions which we have missed out, we will definitely answer them uh, in the post we write about this uh, recording and then we'll respond to you as well. Thanks a lot for taking time to join us and see you soon in the next month. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And have a good day. Bye. Bye.